This 16-year-old suffered a spinal cord stroke. A stroke to the spinal cord? That's right, even though they're rare, it can happen. My name is Dr. Betsy Grunch, a board-certified neurosurgeon, and let's talk about this diagnosis. Now, I don't know this young creator, however, her videos have gotten a lot of views and I've been tagged in the comment section asking to explain what a spinal cord stroke is. Just like her brain, you can have a stroke in your spinal cord as well. In the absence of trauma, it only accounts for 1.2% of neurovascular events. That means it's really, really rare. And to happen in a young person, it's even more rare. So let's talk about it. We all think of ischemic strokes as happening in the brain, and that's whenever the blood vessel supply to a certain part of the brain can get compromised, and then that part of the brain can die, leading to deficits such as paralysis on one side of the body, numbness, or even death. We also have blood vessels that go to our spinal cord, and if any of the blood flow of these vessels gets compromised, you can suffer a stroke to the spine as well. There are three vessels that supply the spinal cord, two posterior spinal artery and one anterior spinal artery. What that means is on the front part of our spinal cord, we only have one blood vessel that supplies that portion of the spine, and on the back part, we have two blood vessels that supply the back part of the spinal cord. When a stroke happens that causes spinal cord injury, it's usually from the anterior spinal artery because there's only one of them. Since we have two of these guys, they can usually help each other out. Here's the crazy part. Almost all of our spinal cord is supplied by the anterior spinal artery, with the exception being our dorsal columns. I apologize in advance for giving anyone PTSD from looking at this diagram who's taken neuroscience in college or any of your professional education. I personally think that neuroscience is really cool. Basically what this is saying is all the important tracks that go up and down our spinal cord and relay information from our brain to our body are usually supplied by the anterior spinal artery. Spinothalamic tracts are the tracts that supply pain and temperature. For example, if you touch a hot stove top and you're like, ow, that's hot, it's because your fingertips are delivering that message to your brain through the spinothalamic tract. And the corticospinal tracts, those are the ones that allow us to move our arms and our legs. Dorsal columns, which are those guys that are supplied by the two posterior spinal arteries, is the tracks that allow us to feel light touch. So basically, if someone touches your skin like this, you feel that because of these guys right here. A stroke will cause all of this neuronal tissue to stop working and you lose all motor function, all pain and temperature function, and usually the only thing that remains is your ability to feel light touch basically means that the person cannot move or feel any pain or temperature from whatever level of the spinal cord injury happens and down. So why would anybody have a stroke, including a young person? In older people, it's usually from vascular disease, like when our arteries get clogged. Therefore, they're more common in smokers and diabetics. You can get it from a blood clot that lodges in the blood vessel and stops the flow. There are some people that are more prone to developing blood clots because of a hypercoagulable disorder. That's a condition that is in your blood that can allow your blood to clot more than normal. And that can happen in young people. Young people can also have what's called AV malformation or where they're born where their anatomy of their blood vessels isn't normal and it can also lead to stroke. Other causes include arterial dissection where you can tear the intimal lining or the innermost lining of your blood vessel and it can cause it to clot off. That can also happen in a trauma. Tumors, infections, and surgery on the spine can also cause spinal cord stroke. So how do you treat it? Unfortunately, this is usually not a diagnosis that is treated by surgery. If it's caused by a clot, we usually give people blood thinning medications. So it really depends on what the cause is. Can you recover from a spinal cord stroke? It's possible, but it really depends on the extent of the injury, the location of the stroke, the cause of the stroke, and how quickly they receive treatment. Some people can completely recover and others can be completely permanently disabled. Recovery may take months to even years. I wish this young creator the absolute best in her recovery and hopefully I helped explain and bring awareness to this rare condition.